George Kelly proposed a personal construct theory, which was both humanistic in that it started with the person, with the individual, emphasizing the uniqueness of the individual, which is known as the ideographic approach. And Kelly's personal construct theory had a cognitive emphasis, which wanted to explore the phenomenology or subjective experiences and personal meaning, the way people process and understand these events. He came up with this theory during when the behaviorists dominated in, the, in psychology. So personal construct theory is organized as follows. The first notion is that humans behave like scientists in that we hypothesize and anticipate, which is when people have expectations we experiment and encounter where the expectations are tested. We also conduct theory building and have constructive revision, which is the revision of the expectation. As a result, after the theory building, we then go back to hypothesize and anticipate, which then builds up our expectations. Also, we have personal constructs which are created through hypothesis and theory building. And these personal constructs encompass expectations, perceptions and behavior. Personal constructs are our constructed representations or ways of representing the world, ways of understanding the world. Personal constructs have creative capacity in which we each live in our own worldview and can experience the same event but take different things from it. Personal construct theory is also ideographic, it's personal. Each person has a unique set of constructs. In exploring our personal constructs, George Kelly created the fundamental postulate in which individuals process anticipated events which then become internalized and Kelly organized these into corollaries or 11 constructs that we have of the world. Examples of corollaries include construction, individuality, organization, dichotomy, choice, range, experience, modulation, fragmentation, commonality, and sociality. I will just go through two of these 11 corollaries. The modulation corollary is where experiences can change our constructs. It has a degree of permeability in which constructs are changeable. There is mental flexibility in that it depends on how open one is to embrace or rejecting new ideas. Constructs can dilate, constrict and accommodate as well as assimilate. This is very similar to uh, Piaget's theory on cognitive development. There's also the dichotomy corollary, which is the view that the world is split into bipolar constructs or opposites. For example, they include good, bad, happy, sad, free will, determinism, nature, nurture, etc. Kelly saw this as imposing a construct on the world instead of seeing it as it actually is. He himself rejected intellectualism as a result. Words like corollary were known as Kellyisms because George Kelly simply made up words to characterize or to list things that didn't really have a name for. Another made up word is constructive alternativism in which Kelly believed that we automatically developed constructs and that we were free to change the way we saw meaning or the world via these alternative constructs. Going back to the point of the dichotomy corollary, he believed in pure pragmatism as a way to go beyond this dualistic notion and to just focus on the usefulness of, the, uh, of a certain construct. So anyway, the constructive alternativism had an implicit account of free will whereby humans may exercise control or gain freedom through simply just changing their views. Mental illness was a result of personal constructs, or rather the, a result of faulty personal constructs according to Kelly. And constructive alternativism thus had a growth mindset in which one changed their constructs by changing experiences, or by changing how they perceived experiences, and through reinterpreting bad experiences as opportunities, this allows individuals to then overcome their issues, whether it be mental illness or something else. Kelly developed a role construct repertory test in which it identified similarities slash differences between people and used a repertory grid 
technique, which could categorize experiences or constructs. This was used to assess the personal constructs, and eventually would be used later in cognitive behavioral therapy, which uh, emphasized cognitive primacy, where expectations shape experiences are automatic and that dysfunctional beliefs and effective reactions were involved in informing these uh, negative expectations or constructs. An example of using cognitive behavioral therapy and the role construct repertory test includes what if an individual was suffering from irrational thinking? Examples of irrational thinking include catastrophizing, all or none thinking, grandiosity, personalizing, suppressing and overgeneralizing expectations. This can then produce a negative cognitive shift where these negative predictions, interpretations lead to self-blame and criticism, self-criticism. But through cognitive behavioral therapy, one can have cognitive restructuring, changing negative anticipation and making these personal constructs more beneficial for the individual. And that ties back into everything that, almost everything that I've just discussed, into theory building and constructive revision, into personal constructs as these expectations and perceptions as well as behavior changes and assisted through the aid of the modulation corollary. So in summary, we looked at personal construct theory proposed by George Kelly in ideas like the experience cycle, personal constructs, fundamental postulate, constructive alternativism, and cognitive behavioral therapy leading to cognitive restructuring. Since the behaviorists dominated during Kelly's time, uh, his theory of personal constructs was looked down upon as there was a black box approach into merely looking at and studying behaviors. But now, especially in light of cognitive behavioral therapy and the growth of cognitive psychology, Kelly has become more accepted by psychologists. So yeah, thanks for watching.